All right, it is time for part one of watercolor basics. Uh, so what is watercolor paint? By now you should understand that it is pigment, little tiny colored particles, plus a binder, probably gum arabica, which will hold the uh, pigment to the paper. Um, and we know that there's also some additives that help become the vehicle, plus we add more water. So in terms of types of watercolor we have, you have watercolor trays. I ordered those with your tuition money. Yeah. Um, watercolor tubes also exist. And you still have to add more water. The paint doesn't come out of these like ready to go. Uh, but there are some advantages of using tubes versus trays. With a tray, it's really fast to set up. You literally just open it, get a cup of water and a brush, and you've got all your colors. Um, if you're working with watercolor tubes, you're starting with probably a blank slate and you have to go and get every single color and find it and squeeze it out and then add water and mix all of the different colors. So if you're trying to do something fast with basic colors, a tray is a lot easier. Uh, if you're trying to do like a huge blue sky, mm, I could mix up a whole puddle, whole puddle, a whole cup if I wanted of this blue with the amount of water I want to get the value of blue I want and that'll make it a lot faster. Um, or if I know I'm trying to mix a lot of really unique colors, um, I can mix them on a separate tray and kind of save them. And so even there's some here that have been dry for, I don't know, ages, my bad. Um, if I add water to them and let them sit for a while, they should wake up and I can use them again. Uh, so the anatomy of a watercolor tray, the little individual pots or pans of color uh, are also sometimes called cakes. And although they are sometimes called cakes, please do not eat them. So we have our tray. It includes all of our pans or cakes of colors, as well as the lid. And I want you to take a guess. What do you think the lid is for? So head to slide 17 of the Nearpod and take a guess. Pause the video. Go guess now. Okay, did you do it? So if you said, well, I mean, if you said the lid is to protect the paint, like obviously, yes. But the thing I want you to know is that the lid is for mixing, 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 mixing. Oh my God, the lid is for mixing. And why is that important to remember? Because it's kind of like, thanks, Ms. Walker, you didn't need to emphasize it so much. Well, the reason is because I don't want any of you to ever be the kind of person who starts mixing paint directly in the cake. If you're trying to make a beautiful yellow green and you're not mixing in the lid, once you add some green to that yellow cake, you don't have yellow cake anymore. It's contaminated, it will never be yellow again. Um, and again, this year you have your own supplies, so it's kind of nice because if you ruin your own paint, hey, that's on you, it's not gonna bother anybody else. If you paint in the classroom, we're sharing those palettes, so you're ruining it for everyone. Um, but even when it's your own, like, you don't want to not have yellow paint anymore and have to go buy, like, a separate cake of yellow. That's annoying. So really get into the habit of keeping the cakes clean by mixing in the lid. And I'm going to have a demo in this presentation to show you how to move paint to the lid so you can freely mix as messily as you want um, and not ruin any of your cakes and get them contaminated with different colors. So this is the part of class where I usually try to get everybody to chant instead of USA, USA. I'm like, mix in the lid, mix in the lid. And it's always one person attempting and everyone else just stares at us. Um, but I, you know, mix in the lid. And then it's also a good idea when you're done painting to clean out the lid with a damp rag or a sponge or a paper towel so that you have a fresh place to mix next time you sit down to paint. Now this year you have your own, so like, eh, like clean it when you need to use it again. Um, but if you grab a palette from the classroom, you need to clean the lid before you put it back into circulation because other people need to be able to mix in the lid and they don't want your purple and yellow, green and brown and goop in the lid. They want a clean place to mix. The importance of pre-wetting your paints. Uh, here's my sample. You can see that the paints that are what I'm calling pre-wet are much more vibrant, much brighter. Uh, and here's the deal. You have pigment, which I have represented with these little sleeping emojis, um, and they're asleep. 
pigment binder, a little bit of vehicle additives, just kind of dry there in your watercolor cake. Um, you drip water on it and then they start to wake up, percolate the pigment and the additives all start to disperse in the water. So the longer you let the pigment and different additives disperse and dissolve into the water, the brighter your paints will be because the more pigment will be on your brush when you dip your brush into the water. So we have this little like dorky rhyme, uh, drip, 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 let it sit. And uh, I usually try to wait at least one minute. Sometimes I might set a timer for like three or four minutes. So you want to like pre-wet your paints, drip water into them, um, and then wait a few minutes, maybe, you know, set up some of your other supplies. If you like drip your paints first and then set everything else up. Uh, come on, cooperate. There is a video for a couple different methods for how to prep your paints. You're going to find that video in slides 18, or if the video is on slide 18 of the Nearpod. Um, and then there's a single question, which is just kind of like a silly question uh, to make sure you were paying attention on slide 19. You can go watch that now, or you can wait until this presentation is done. But I would like you to watch the video about how to pre-wet your paints before next class. Then it is important that you know semi-moist is a technical term for watercolor with additives with humectants that keeps the moisture in the case. So I'm sorry for anyone who hates that word, but that's what it's called. Um, so semi-moist watercolors have an additive that keep them wet. They wake up a lot faster. They're also sticky or tacky or gummy um, when they're in the tray. Uh, other types of watercolors, let's see, so I bought you folks all praying and they are semi-moist. Um, there are other watercolors, the ones pictured here, we have some in the classroom. They're Sargent brand. Um, this is a particular set of Richeson brand. Richeson makes semi-moist and not watercolors. Um, and they are more flat, matte, not shiny. So you can kind of tell if watercolors are semi-moist by if they're shiny when they're dry. Um, so these kind will take longer to wake up than the semi-moist ones. Um, so we have mostly semi-moist watercolors in the classroom and the ones you have. And the thing that I want you to know is, you know, they wake up faster, yay, but also because they're so sticky and tacky, it's easy to accidentally push too hard with your brush and start carving chunks out. You don't want to stab the, the pan or the cake. You don't want to carve chunks out. You want to be dabbing gently with your brush to pull and plop water onto the lid, which I will show you in another video demo coming up. Um, it's included in my mixing demo video and it shows you how to use a fluffy brush to plop color from your pan into the lid and then work from the lid and that also helps you avoid accidentally contaminating your watercolor cakes. So in the Nearpod on slide 20, that's where you will find this video. Um, I'm also going to put the links to these two videos just directly in Canvas so it's a little easier to find them. Uh, but that is like the last thing of the Nearpod, the last thing for today. Um, because next class, you're going to be learning five watercolor techniques through video tutorials that I've made. You're going to practice those techniques and you are going to submit them so I can see them and give you feedback as you go. So if you're trying to do one and I'm like, oh, you're not getting it, I'll talk to you, help you figure it out, make it good. All right, that's that. Finish the Nearpod, start gathering your supplies, and I will see you next class.